Before the highly publicized trial of Jody Arias versus Travis Alexander and others like it, one notable and probably one if not the most publicized trial deemed the trial of the century, the people of the state of California versus OJ Simpson, went on to become one of the most notorious trials in US TV history. As we all know, OJ was hit with a not guilty verdict thanks to his dream team of defense attorneys consisting of social justice lawyer Johnny Cochran, Robert Shapiro, and the man of the moment, Robert Kardashian Sr. But what you probably didn't know was that long before renewing his lawyer license and coming to Simpson's defense, Robert and the Juice were long-term best friends, dating all the way back to their university days at USC. Rob's involvement in the case left a bad taste in people's mouths, specifically his own family, and suspension surrounding Rob and OJ's relationship left many questioning his true intentions. Robert himself questioning OJ's innocence. We're about to discover some unsettling truths surrounding the People vs. OJ and Robert Kardashian's ties that get a suspected murderer off the hook scot-free. Robert Kardashian Sr. was a huge deal back in the early 90s when he took it upon himself to defend Mr. Juice Man himself, OJ Simpson, in what has been deemed the trial of the century back in 1994. His insane loyalty to OJ propped him up to be a well-rounded figure in the publicized debacle, while on the other hand, people weren't too fond of their ties that date back decades prior to OJ's alleged involvement in the murder of his ex-wife Nicole Brown, along with her friend Ronald Goldman who were both brutally stabbed to death inside of Nicole's Brentwood condo on June 12th in LA. The year was 1967, in fact, when the then water boy for the Trojan football team located at University of Southern California, Robert Kardashian crossed paths, more so caught a glimpse of one another, while OJ, who'd been a running back, was on the same team. The two didn't actually meet officially whilst on the team, but later on down the road, they crossed paths officially at a mutual friend's residence on their tennis court. Bonding over their respectful positions on their uni's football team, despite Robert being a wee water boy, the two quickly built a friendship that unbeknownst to them at the time, would last for decades to come. The bond swiftly grew more and more, and the two grew closer than ever, even turning their friendship into a business partnership. Rob invests in OJ's company, The Juice, opening frozen yogurt shops and other ventures. Business was an interest for them both, further moving on to investing in a concert cinema, a cinema that shows music videos instead of movie previews before movies in theaters. Rob and OJ's bond, without a doubt, had grown solid, and when OJ met his second wife, Nicole Brown, Robert was right there alongside his right-hand man. As the men grew older and came into their own, they remained close, even while starting families. OJ was even the best man at Robert's wedding to Kris Jenner, then Kris Houghton, in 1978, and visited the newlyweds in the hospital a year later after the birth of their daughter, Courtney. OJ was there for all of Rob's kids, so much so they'd often refer to him as Uncle OJ. Annual vacations and frequent visits became a norm for the duo. They were living the high life, but that all soon come to a crashing halt when 1994 rolled around and OJ, as well as Robert, would find themselves in one of America's most highly profiled murder investigations of all time. The People vs. OJ took place on January of 1995 and had the entire nation on standby awaiting the guilty verdict for the former pro footballer who had been accused of murdering his ex and mother of his children, Nicole Brown Simpson, along with her friend Ron Goldman. And like clockwork, Robert wasted no time getting suited and booted, putting on his lawyer cap and coming to one of his best mate's defense even if that meant getting pummeled by all sorts of accusations and assumptions regarding the case. Although he came flying to Simpson's side like a bat out of hell, Robert's attorney skills were a little rusty to say the least, since after all, it had been a good 20 years since the last time he'd stepped foot inside of a courtroom defending someone's honor. 
quickly reactivating his law license, Robert was determined to protect his mate and prove O.J.'s innocence. Led by popular defense attorney Robert Shapiro, followed by Robert himself along with Johnny Cochran, F. Lee Bailey, Alan Dershowitz, Sean Hawley, and others trained in the field, the team laid down a foundational plan in pursuit of O.J.'s freedom. But before the six-foot-tall Juice met his fate with those cold silvery cuffs, he skirted right on over to his Bud Roberts mansion for some much-needed counseling. Not for the murder of his now-deceased wife, Nicole, but for his own unaliving idealization. Barricading himself in little Kimberly's room, who thankfully wasn't home at the time, OJ threatened to throw in the towel, and I ain't talking about football. Robert Kardashian basically said, not on my watch, and told the juice to make like OJ and concentrate. What would Kimmy Cakes think if she found out Uncle OJ had taken his own life right there in her room? June 17th would be the day Simpson was supposed to turn himself into authorities, but that never happened. He, along with an associate, would hop into OJ's white Bronco and flee, inciting LAPD on the mother of high-speed chases, broadcasted to over 95 million people. While OJ was out and about frantically fleeing from the police, a press meeting was simultaneously being led by Robert, who took it upon himself to read OJ's So of Side letter. The message directed to 24 friends began by stating that he, as in OJ, had nothing to do with the murders of his ex-wife and her friend. The entire ordeal tore Robert's friends and family apart, Chris being one of many who, without directly stating, believed OJ was more guilty than Eve when she had bit the apple. During the final verdict, Rob made sure to arrive to court earlier than usual, trotting to OJ's cell and praying alongside him, not necessarily for a non-guilty verdict, but as a general downtime with the Lord. Some believe it was due to Robert's guilt eating him alive for defending O.J. in the first place. As time went on and the trial came to a head, the well-established dream team had become more and more disgruntled. Despite the word salad, pleas, and desperate attempts to get the jurors on team O.J., Word of OJ's links to Nicole Brown and Ron Goldman's deaths began to circulate, Robert himself admitting in a follow-up interview with Barbara Walters that as time went on and more evidence came about, a good chunk of the defense attorneys, himself included, weren't 100% sure in OJ's innocence. Johnny Cochran had doubts of OJ's story about the cut on his finger he got the night of Nicole and Ron's murders, and the blood evidence that was tested by DNA examiners discovered that it was Nicole's blood found on one of OJ's socks, as well as Ron's blood found inside of OJ's infamous Bronco as well as OJ's, Nicole's, and Ron's blood discovered on the leather glove found at the crime scene. Robert Kardashian Sr. was conflicted on what to believe. He began this case wanting to be a loyal friend but things would end with Robert feeling semi-guilty of his friend's non-guilty verdict, read on October 3rd of 1995. When Barbara Walters put Robert in the hot seat and asked if he would have found OJ guilty if Rob himself were one of the jurors, Robert initially started off by saying that he wouldn't have found his friend guilty, even after all of the abuse claims and 911 calls initiated by Nicole Brown herself at the lethal mercy of her husband. But nonetheless, Robert has doubts overall. Countless death threats toward himself, his family, and a now broken marriage. Robert's personal businesses and relationships suffered the consequences of him defending an alleged murderer that half the nation and neighboring countries were conflicted by. Nevertheless, that's the price Robert Sr. was willing to pay if that meant he got to help his buddy during his time of need. Although he admits that he didn't believe OJ would have done the same for him if he were, God forbid, ever in a similar situation. It was all worth the backlash in the beginning, but he wouldn't dare do it over again if prompted. Their relationship was never the same after the trial, but OJ insisted on him and Robert remaining friends till the end. For Robert, however, the end, unbeknownst to him, was right around the corner because he'd soon pass away from esophageal cancer less than a decade later in 2003. He never did truly heal from the case, 
some believing that his suppression from the truth took a toll on his health, resulting in his own death. Robert Kardashian was as loyal as loyal comes. And if he's guilty, your honor, but I'm going to stick beside him, was a person, it'd be him. Would you ever be this loyal to a friend? Let us know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. And stay tuned for more true celebrity stories.